There's a problem. Splatoon has so many weapons to its name, but clearly there's not enough. So with the help from these guys, let's invent completely new inky firepower that we could see in the world of Splatoon. Yeah. <laughs> So how's this gonna work? I mean, there's a lot of artillery in this game already, but if you stop and look at how those things are all spread out across its now 11 classes, you'll quickly start to see how things actually appear to be. Even just taking out reskins of existing weapons, there's a ton of shooters. We don't need any more shooters. But there's only so many things we can make into usable and more importantly, believable Splatoon kits. So to make sure everyone gets a fair shake, we came up with two ideas for every class class with the exception of shooters because they don't need anything else but for courtesy there is one idea that we did come up with and hey it looks like everything's ready to go ready ready this is the seal and sea based on a caulking gun and honestly this is a shooter that doesn't really behave like most others with a semi-automatic firing system this piece of equipment prioritizes range and power rather than its painting ability the ink doesn't even spread power with straight shots and perfect accuracy i'd say that a sharp shot can get a lot of use out of this <laughs> With point sensor, you can mark easy targets to go after with your zip caster, which makes the weapon combat ready. But if you really want a combat dominant armament, look no further than this. This Splatana is certainly unique. I mean, look at this thing. The ink comes out the tip, but the rest is just solid material. How does that even work? Mm, I got this. So for those who've played Super Smash Bros, you're undoubtedly familiar with the character of Marth. Marth's a bit unique as a sword fighter because of a neat mechanic he has called the Tipper, which means that any attack that connects will have different properties depending on how close or far away the opponent is, with, unsurprisingly, the most damage being dealt at the tip of the blade, hence the term Tipper. And guess what? The Splatana marker has this as well, with it being based on the markers used in school. This lug is actually pretty lightweight, with a fast swing but overall weak dash slash. To make up for this, it has a tipper effect, where the damage values skyrocket. This is very much a if you know how to use it, you'll do it well type of weapon. And with Toxic Mist to slow down foes to line up the tipper hits and Booyah Bomb for some range and defensive power, there's no doubt that this Slayer would pose a real threat. This is in stark contrast to the Stack Tacker. This charger is kind of a hybrid between the Squiffer and Snipe Rider. Similarities being lower range from the former and the ability to hold multiple shots at the cost of not being able to keep them while submerged, like the latter. However, with the former of this weapon taking the shape of a Pringles can, that has the distinct advantage of the ink bullets being, well, chip-shaped. And with the chip shape comes chip damage. The wider bullet makes it easier to hit direct shots from further away, but at the cost of those shots being a bit weaker with it taking two of them to splat an opponent. However, with the shot storage allowing for three chips per charge, it shouldn't be an issue. As this is very much a starter charger, we're gonna give it burst bombs to deal with people in close range, and especially like Trizuka. Got the whole kit rounded out. And speaking of rounding out, there's only one other weapon in this video that could possibly be more of that than the stack tacker. It's a gumball machine. The gumdrop splatling is a gimmick on a silver platter. Everything involved with this is whimsical and childlike, which just adds to its nonsensical playstyle. For starters, the kit. It's a burst bomb and a big bubbler. Do you see the shtick? And to add to that, the splatling has a very wide spread, where instead of the traditional bullets, it shoots out tri-stringer-like barbs, where instead of it looking like dynamite, it now looks like, well, you know, gumballs. Now, these don't do as much damage on the ground as its stringer counterparts, only around 10 points of it, but to balance it out, it has a relatively low fire rate, and to add to the whimsy, we're making it so that it has more accuracy as you jump around, emulating a sugar rush that you'd see in a child. I don't know about you, but I honestly think... Hold on, stringers? Remember when that was supposed to be like the initial selling point of Splatoon 3? The cool new bow and arrow weapons? Of which we only got two of? <sighs> Let's fix that. 
This is the Paraffin 80, based on lava lamps. The goal with this weapon is to round out the Stringer Trio, as we already have medium and light weapons, but now we're adding a heavy variation to the class. The main differences between this and the others is that it has longer range, at the cost of a slower grounded fire rate. This doesn't extend to the airborne shots though, which do come out substantially faster. The real meat and potatoes comes with what the Paraffin 80 shoots out, whereas other Stringers just kind of pelt you with shots like this. <laughs> The difference between the paraffin and regular stringers is that these shots not only pierce, but they don't explode on player impact. They explode on the floor. Like this. Huh? See, look. Oh, no, 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 no. The combo is deadly. So, uh, there's a lot of this ink on the field at once, clearly. But we haven't really had a way to use the enemy ink against them. So what if there was a weapon that could take the attacks and fling them back? Well, now there is. This new take on a roller functionally acts like a sponge, soaking up enemy ink while rolling. This is very much a visual thing that'll happen, but in terms of gameplay, it'll affect your flicks. The horizontal flick is similar to big flicks, while the vertical flick is similar to dynamo. However, the power output could be scaled by rolling and absorbing enemy ink, basically charging up the sponge. When this is fully charged, it'll launch a wave of ink that can one-shot opponents, kind of similar to that Octo Samurai from Splatoon 2. While it takes a bit of time to charge, it wouldn't be too difficult either, since you'd have a very fast rolling speed and a pretty wide trail. The gameplay loop can be pretty flexible as you dictate how this weapon controls. However, some people aren't about controlling how the weapon works. Some people just like to pull the trigger and do some damage. And there's nothing more suited for that than the- Huh. Alright. Uh, this is like a companion piece to the NZAP shooter, but instead of it being based on the NES Zapper, we've jumped a few console generations with this one being based on the Wii Zapper. Now, compared to it, it has more range, higher damage output, but at the cost of a lower fire rate. With a torpedo for poking, an inkjet for a good pivot, this blasterized version of a beloved peripheral could slot right into the Splatoon world. But I get it. Sometimes you want the power of a blaster in a more mobile form. I mean, that's basically what shooters are to dualies, and blasters actually used to be shooters. So what could happen if we fuse those two into one? The Pulse Duelies are blaster style variants of the conventional dually, and if you want an idea of how they play, think Reaper Overwatch. As opposed to other weapons in the class, the Pulse Duelies only get one large dodge roll. To factor in the power output of these things, the combined fire has the range of a sad sneeze, but it can two-shot any creature that gets in its way, making anybody using this a menace to the enemy team. As a heavy dually with lacking mobility, it needs something that can put pressure on opponents to bait them towards you, so we decided to give it a suction bomb and triple ink strike to fill that need. Speaking of weapons with tri-strike, here's the- Hmm. Alright, well, this is the Simpoon. It's a tuba. The whole thing here is that it shoots ink high into the air to have it all come crashing down into a cascading cacophony. In addition to it painting your feet, it also boasts some of the highest ink efficiency at the cost of a slow, heavy fire rate. And by tacking on an angle shooter for quick damage in the aforementioned Tri-Strike, this is a one-of-a-kind slosher that could quickly become a fan favorite, if not for the fact that it's hilarious as shit. Hey, have we talked about Brawlers yet? No, I don't think so. Maybe Failboat knows something about that. Uh, hey, did we talk about Brawlers yet? Huh? But all right, this is the Mesh Brella, the most selfish one of the bunch. The canopy is curved back so far it doesn't really protect other people unless they're right behind you. This is maximum forward protection with a beefier shield at the detriment of lower strafe speed and the fact that the canopy launches after two seconds instead of the usual three. However, it does get an HP boost of 50% after it's launched out, which is pretty mean. Oh, and range-wise, it's comparable to the mini Splatling, so it goes decently far for Umbrella. Slap on Autobomb as a sub and try Zooka for a special, and I'd say this is one of the furthest reaching umbrellas that could be in the game. Nah, nah, nah. If we want to talk about long reaching weapons, nothing goes further than the. Functionally, we made the Nautilus of Chargers, complete with its recharge mechanic. Unlike it, the Pin Whirl has the largest ink consumption of any of the Chargers, the furthest range of all the Chargers, and unlike them, their shots can ricochet off of walls, kind of like Line Marker. Oh, and it's based off of a syringe. Hope all this stuff makes sense. If you have a hard time locating opponents, you'll have Autobomb as a versatile sub, and Tena Missiles can help you locate opponents at a distance and displace them when you do get them. But then again, range is overrated. Being slow and hitting far sure can be good if you don't want to actually participate in the battle. Some people want to go fast, chip away at health, and overall be the Splatoon version of the Flash. 
the splash. Yeah. Luckily, that's where this comes in. The brush glass really hasn't gotten a lot of love either, so we're going to start out by making a middle ground between the ink brush and its octo counterpart. Being based on brush markers, it has a thinner rolling trail than the octo brush, but is more ink efficient. But unlike the ink brush, it has a stronger swipe. The Caligra brush is a decent painter with an exact middle speed between the two other brushes. Couple that with a fizzy bomb as a sub and inkjet as its special, I think as a trio, the brushes all work pretty well together. But then again, there's nothing quite like rolling with a good ol' roller. But as a roller main, I find it a little bit odd that the current game plan for regular rollers is to flick instead of roll. Hell, the tidy up roller from earlier literally incentivized flicking. So we made a roller that makes you want to roll. By having it be so that when you roll, a thick shield of ink gets flung up right in front of you blocking shots. This powerful and unwavering shield comes at the cost of ink consumption, so all in all, it's not that efficient. But I'd say it's more of a positive, if anything. Combine that with a slow but wide roll, weak grounded flick but monstrous vertical flick, and pairing Ultra Stamp and Beacon to this, I'd say that the Sodwaller could be a crazy cool contraption to wield on the battlefield. Hold on! If we're talking about crazy cool contraptions, surely this thing came up in conversation. Yeah? No? This weapon is indicative of the purest form of insanity. It's a stringer that throws the idea of explosive shots on its head. See, this is a whoopee cushion. So instead of shooting out the barbs like we've talked about prior, it shoots out a single ink mine like whoopee cushion. You are literally shooting out landmines. Granted, these aren't nearly as powerful as them, with them only sticking around for three to five seconds. And to balance them out, the charge time to get them is longer than the tri-stringer, they don't mark opponents, and there can only be so many of them on the field at once from a single joker. With Toxic Mist as a sub and Wave Breaker as a special. Come on. C come on, that's, that's clever, right? Right? No. So cup pong is a thing that exists and having a red solo cup as a slosher just kind of makes sense for a lightweight kit. This means it'll have a faster fire rate with the ink traveling in clusters as opposed to a wave and it generally reaching a higher arc than the original slosher, but not as high as the Simphoon. But how those work is fundamentally pretty different. If quick bits of damage are your thing, then it's good to note that this gets burst bomb and coupling it with a long range killer well 5.1 might be a pretty good weapon. If I may interject, if we want to talk about a pretty good weapon, look no further than the heatsink blaster. Isn't this supposed to be the... There it is. Based on PC cooling equipment, this whole kit is based on the shtick of gamers. Fizzy Bomb for gamer drinks. Booyah Bomb for gamer rage. This blaster is made for all the gamers out there. Alright, we're done with that bit. The big thing with the heatsink blaster is that its fire rate increases over time, like it needs time to warm up before shooting as fast as it can. Granted, the inverse is true for damage. And to add to this, it has a relatively low ink efficiency, especially for a blaster. You can't run this thing too hot for too long. I think with this Bowser Breath gimmick, what it lacks in continuous, it makes up for in versatility. But versatility isn't just limited to speed of the weapon. Sometimes you need that extra little bit, some je ne sais quoi. So how about we make a brush with a fun new twist? How about we make a brush that lets you fly? Okay, so I might have lied a bit there. We could make a brush that allows you to fly. Trust me, we tried. However, the feather brush can do something kind of similar if you think about it. I mean, flying is just falling with style, right? So what if you could control the rate of descent by repeatedly swinging around? Now, there'd have to be a few limitations to this. Mostly the fact that horizontal movement is restricted. Like, however much you slow down in a vertical sense, the same is applied to the inverse. This is more so because this helps prevent the game from breaking, as much as I love that. Now, when we talk about combat capability, it's a feather. Have you ever been hit by a feather? It, it does not hurt at all. So a similar principle carries over here. However, the whole name of the game with this brush is mobility. So it has to be the fastest roll speed in the game with a swing range larger than the standard ink brush. For utility and combo potential, torpedo as a sub works well, and crab tank for some much needed DPS out makes this competitively weak weapon into a nuisance running around the battlefield. And yes, I know that we've made a lot of funky and outlandish concepts in this video so far, but we're not done yet though. The Shade Brella is probably the goofiest Brella to ever, well, 
not exist, because it fundamentally goes the exact opposite direction of what Brellas are. So get this, instead of the shield protecting the front, it protects the sides. At all angles. Yeah, it's a lampshade. It's a tube without a top or a bottom, so that's exactly how it's gonna work in this sense. Gameplay-wise, this forces people to attack either from the front or behind, as this cancels out flanks. Also, to make this just a little bit more fun, it gets the undercover brella treatment, where you get to shoot while the canopy is still on the brella itself. However, to atone for these crazy changes, it has a slower turning speed, but it does have good ink efficiency, so there's that. And I realize that some people won't like a brella that doesn't cover the front, so here, have a splash wall. That'll provide something, but remember, you have to put away the shade brella to throw it out, so there's a little bit of risk versus reward there. Oh, and Inkjet as the special gives vantage, range, and mobility, so I think that works pretty well. I don't really have a lot to say about it. Pff, I don't know. What do you want me to say about it? I don't know what to say about it. Yeah, honestly, I don't either. I mean, looking at this thing, like, look, what the hell is this? Like, this is just an enigma. For instance, this thing doesn't shoot individual bullets. I mean, like all Splatlings shoot out a torrent of ink, but let's just streamline the process. One big aimable stream, kind of like a stingray. Look, it's based on a milking machine. Milk in its purest form shouldn't be curdled into shapes. It's a thin liquid, so let's keep the spirit as such. Please bear with me on this. I promise it'll make sense. Like here, let's look at this stream of ink. A direct shot doing most of the damage is right at the start, and the other parts on the sides, top, bottom, or whatever are all indirect and won't do as much. Think of it kind of like a limited range stingray. Speaking on range, it's similar to the splatter scope, with that range fluctuating based on how much you charge the weapon. Don't worry, it doesn't take too long to charge anyway, especially for a heavyweight weapon like this. This is equipped with splash wall to provide a little bit of extra protection and ink vacuum. It's a milk machine, it's a vacuum, come on. The spritz dualies are the anti-glugas. While the glugas maintain their range and accuracy when doing separated fire, the spritz dualies are based on perfume bottles. So the regular fire has a very wide spread. We're talking splatter shot nova or arrow spray levels of spread. This weapon was designed for ink coverage as it's efficient, fast, and overall a fun take on the dualies archetype. Tack on fizzy bomb as a sub and ink storm as a special, it's safe to say that painting is what it does and it does it very well. And here we are, what could possibly be the last weapon that we cover? We've talked about everything from blasters to brushes, but there's only one class we've only given a little bit of love to, Splatanas. And by far the simplest solution for one of these is often the correct one. Question, when thinking about childhood pool toys, what comes to mind? I don't know about you, but the pool noodle was it. So let's talk about our final weapon, the Splatana Tuber. If you've ever swung around one of these things, you'll know that they are very unwieldy. Hard to swing, but when they smack your sibling across the face, oh, that's a fun feeling. So to get that same feeling, these same attributes carry over to the Slatana Tuber. But in translating this, it allows for a wider arc when firing, a longer range dash slash, and overall, it's a heavier feeling sword. The whole theme for this kit is going to be the beach, and having a nice refreshing soda on the sand is really nice, but something else you can find on the beach? Crabs. So of course it's got to have crab tank. But then again, we don't need another crab tank kit, do we? Nope. And that's all the weapons. Do you like them? What's your favorite? I want to know. 